Hey guys, what is going on? This is Travis P11. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. And today we're going to do a little cleanup of this Break Action Stevens 9478 shotgun. Uh, it's a 10 gauge shotgun. It does belong to a friend of my dad's. So shout out to my dad's buddy Jerry for loaning us the shotgun. Yes, the barrel keeps on going, keeps on going. And for this shotgun, it's going to take a few more cleaning supplies than what we normally use on our handguns and so on. Not much, but you pick up one of these, obviously you want to do it the right way. So we're going to show you how to do a minor disassembly on this shotgun, uh, just enough to safely take it apart and clean it, put it back together. I'll show you some of the different items I'll be using, and uh, we'll get this thing looking like it's brand new. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. We'll start off with the uh, list of cleaning supplies that you will need to do this job. All right, so this is definitely uh, making a mess, but you know what? It's going to be worth it when it's all said and done. So let's start off with the main piece here. I did pick up a Hoppies 9 shotgun cleaning kit. Uh, mainly because with the length of the barrel, I was going to have to add this to another existing cleaning kit that I have in order to stretch the 36 inches to get that barrel clean. Uh, we've got some Hoppies Number 9 gun bore cleaner that we're going to be using. Now we also have the lubricating gun oil, which is totally fine. Um, I'm more of a fan of cleanse oil, which is what we'll be using on the outside. You've got some patches for the bore, you've got uh, jag and so on, everything you need. Pretty inexpensive, inexpensive cleaning kit. Um, I always recommend uh, gloves, rubber gloves, nitrile gloves to keep the chemicals off your hands. Uh, basic screwdriver to take the forearm off, to take that, that hand guard off uh, on the front end. We've also got a bore mop and we've got a bristle brush. Uh, these are just copper. I just get these at Shields for a couple bucks. These are 10 gauge for the proper caliber. Um, any kind of a cleaning brush that you might have with nylon bristles on it. Uh, swabs, cotton swabs. I like to use Tipton Power Swabs. We've got some Shields brand gun cleaning patches. By the way, I'm not sponsored by any of these companies. These are just the products I use. Uh, it, just in case I need them, a few more um, uh, patches for the bore. A bore light. For the wood furniture, I like to use Scott's Liquid Gold. You can get this at Walmart. And I've used it on vintage furniture that's 30, 40, 50 years old in my, my previous residence. Stuff works great. And it doesn't take much, and it's going to definitely richen up that wood and preserve it. Kind of fill in some of those scratches and cracks and allows those to darken so they kind of blend in more with the natural finish. So I do like that, and I'll just be applying that with a microfiber cloth. Uh, cleanse oil, field and range cleaner, the liquid. A cleanse oil wipe, which I'm just going to use to wipe off the barrel. It saves a little bit of time. Uh, a little needle oiler. Now, don't get me wrong. You can get by with just this kit right here and some patches, and you're going to be good. But for the most part, if you really want to get a thorough cleaning, and by the looks of this thing, I don't think it's been cleaned in a while, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you have all the right products. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, first step, safety first. Let's ensure that the shotgun is, in fact, unloaded. Even though the hammer's down, we're still going to double check. So there's a button you press down here in order to unlock the action. We're going to open that up, verify that the uh, bore is empty. It is and we will move on to our next step. All right, so the next step is to take off the handguard. So we're gonna do that. You just have a single screw right here. Now this one's a little bit rusty, but I'm not gonna be doing any major refurbishing or re-bluing today, but it's very, very simple to get that uh, screw out. So just go ahead and unscrew it. Standard screwdriver will work for you. And uh, we'll take that screw out of there. Okay, the handguard just pulls straight up. So we're gonna do that. Now there's a patch underneath here where I was testing the cleanse oil to make sure it wasn't gonna harm the finish. And uh, so if you see a shiny spot, we haven't really started cleaning yet, but that's all it's going to take. All right, now let's go ahead and show you how to separate the barrel from the action. Hey guys, this is just a little post-edit edition. I'm already done with the video, but I realized I didn't do a very good job showing you how this action is going to break apart. It's very simple. After you've taken off the handguard, okay, you're going to want to push in on this button right here, which is what you're going to use to break down the action, okay? And then you simply pull back and up, and that's it. So it just goes back into this little notch, comes back together, and that's all. So it simply comes unhooked just like that. So we're just going to show you down the bore here. You probably can't tell, but it is pretty crusty down there. There's some lint down there. Not a lot of pitting. It looks like the barrel's been fairly well taken care of, but we can kind of show you a before and after. It's a little bit, a little bit dirty down there. Okay, so grab yourself a couple uh, bore patches and just go ahead and put them in your bottle of bore cleaner. Dunk them in there, pull them out. Now be careful, this stuff's a little bit nasty. So if you have any kind of a marble countertop or anything like that, make sure you have something covering it. And we're just going to run the patch down. We're going to take off the jag on the end and move it back down again. Now, you can go back to forward if you want to. I prefer to go from uh, the uh, breech to the front of the bore to the muzzle. Okay, just go ahead and push that through. Okay, I'm going to run that patch through a couple times. We're going to let it sit for a few minutes, and we'll go on to our next step. Okay, so it's been about five minutes. We're going to go ahead and run the bristle brush down. We're going to be going from breech to muzzle. We're going to unscrew the bristle brush on the end, bring it back down, go from you know left to right. Back to front, so here we go. And like I said, you're probably gonna need an extra extension like I did in order to get that 36 inch barrel taken care of. Okay, breach to muzzle a second time, back to front, here we go. 
And again, like I said, I'm using a 10 gauge bore brush that I had to go buy at the store, but they were readily available at the sporting goods store. There we go. Okay, uh, now we're gonna take a couple clean um, bore patches and just go ahead and run those down. We wanna get all that solvent out of the barrel so it's nice and dry before we apply our gun oil. So this is just an example of what came out of the barrel. There's a lot of gunk on here. I'm actually gonna do the whole process again with the solvent, the brush, and then the patches. And then you do that if you need to. If you get this kind of a um, you know, coating coming out on your patches, do it one more time. And then we're gonna run the oil through so when we come back, we'll do the oiling so phase. Now what you wanna do is just take a few patches, uh, put some oil on it, run that through the bore, and then run a couple dry patches through it, and then an oil patch and a dry patch. Eventually, your patches are gonna come out clean, and when they do, you know, you're, you know that you're done. This one's been shot a lot, so it does have quite a buildup in there. I'm actually gonna take an entire cleanse oil wipe, and I'm going to put that through and push it through the barrel because this is such a large barrel. That's gonna give you a nice saturation. Let that sit for a couple minutes, and I'm gonna come back with a bore mop, and then I'll come back with a few patches with a little bit of oil on it, and that's gonna be it. So let's go ahead and run that uh, wipe down the barrel and get that all cleaned up. And again, you're really going to find that solvent is going to be bringing up a lot of the, uh, the carbon and fouling that's been in that barrel. Okay, so I've got the entire wipe on here. That's one of the nice things about having a large shag. It does hold it easily, so I'm going to wipe it on. Cleanse oil is an interesting product. Um, you can, kind of like CLP, you can put it through the first time and it kind of does like a cleansing process. And then the second time, it's basically an oiling process. So I'm going to run that patch. I'm going to run that uh, whole wipe through a couple times through the barrel. And then we'll keep going. But we are getting it clean. Okay, so final two steps, I'm gonna take my cotton bore mop. We're gonna go ahead and run that through a couple times. So push that through. We're gonna finish up with a couple drops of oil on a patch and that's gonna be it for the bore or for the barrel. And for what it's worth, I don't know if you guys can see a difference, but it is like a mirror finish in there now. It's not all flat inside and dull. It's nice and shiny, that bore looks fantastic. And let's move on to the rest of the shotgun. Okay, so we got two areas that we want to focus on here. Uh, just going to put a drop of oil on a cotton swab. And we want to just wipe out this area where the uh, screw goes for the handguard. It could be rusty inside of here. It could be a little bit of buildup. Okay, the second area we want to look at is this little caulking mechanism uh, towards the rear here. Okay, so if this happens to, uh, to pop out at all, it's not a big deal. Like if you lift it up, it'll pop out a little bit. You can simply lift up the lever and you can push in and let go and that'll recock this mechanism right here just so you know. Um, we're going to leave it out because that's how it was when it came out of the shotgun. There's a possibility we'll have to push that back in so that's something you can run into. Now if we can get this wiped off with our Q-tip, just go through it a couple times. It is pretty, uh, it's fairly dirty. You can lift it up a little bit and get in there. You can kind of pull up with it. You can pull up this tab with your thumb and just get in there and wipe it off a little bit. I know you guys can't see a whole lot with what's going on, but we're just scrubbing it out right now. Okay. Give that a little wipe off before we continue wiping off the rest of the gun. Now there's a little pin that's right back here. Little tiny pin, little tiny circles here. We're just going to put a drop of oil on uh, each side of that just to help ensure proper lubrication in the future. Okay, there we go. Okay, it looks pretty good. Okay, this area down here, we're going to go ahead. You can scrub this off with a brush if you want to, this uh, breech portion. This is a little dirty, so we're definitely going to give this a nice wipe off with some patches, get that cleaned out, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so for your ejector, I believe, you wanna make sure you get down there and scrub that good with your cotton swabs, get that nice and clean. This had a pretty good uh, buildup in it, so make sure that that's nice and shiny when you get done with it. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wipe off the entire barrel and just let it marinate for like five or 10 minutes, well, for the duration of the cleaning video. And then we'll wipe it off with a dry patch, uh, but we definitely wanna get good oil soak on this thing because it hasn't been cleaned so long, like I've said before. So you can put a couple drops of oil on a patch, just go ahead and wipe off the whole barrel, set it off to the side, and then we'll continue with the uh, remainder of the firearm. Okay, so this rear receiver portion is just totally just glazed and caked over. It's pretty dirty. So what I'm gonna do is wipe it out with a couple patches of oil. I'm gonna scrub with my brush and then wipe it out again and get that all cleaned out. You guys can do the same. Try to keep all of your crud and debris from falling back if possible, kind of keep it tilted down while you do so. And you can pull back on this little release lever right here and really get in there and scrub that out good. Okay, so it definitely looks much better now. It's nice and shiny. It's still a little bit frosted inside. I think that's just the casting of the metal. Uh, make sure this little pivot point right here has got some oil on it because that's where your locking mechanism is gonna latch into place. There was even a little bit of uh, surface rust going on here, but it's nice and shiny now. Just simply wiping it off with a couple patches of oil took care of it. Uh, put two drops of oil on a patch. Go ahead and wipe off the outside of the receiver. We'll deal with the hammer and the wood furniture here in a little bit. Just make sure everything's nice and, and clean. Again, you can always wipe it off with a dry patch when you get done if you want to. I'm I will go and clean the wood furniture right now, I think. So when you get this done, just go ahead and set it off to the side and we will show you how to clean the wood stock. Just a quick tip here before I forget. Uh, cotton swab, a couple drops of oil, you can go straight down and wipe out 
this area essentially in here and then also behind these little covers right here were pretty gross they were covered with a lot of grime so definitely wipe those out with some oil i'm gonna hit those a couple times it'll make it also kind of smooth and smooth out the button just a little bit too your release button but this is an area that you don't want to neglect so make sure you do wipe that out just hit with a couple swabs and i'll just ensure that the parts get lubricated in there and now we'll move on okay so let me show you how this works just go ahead and just shake the can gently real quick this is the um, scott's liquid gold Go ahead and spray some of it on a lint-free cloth. You can see how dull the wood is right now. It's definitely got a lot of nicks and stuff in it. And this will definitely start to condition the wood after just a couple days. Uh, go ahead and spray that on the cloth. Okay, just a little tiny bit. Go ahead and wipe it on the stocks. It's I've gotten this on metal before. It doesn't hurt anything, but you can still go back over the metal if you want to with uh, gun oil if you feel like it. It doesn't matter. I've used this on my Mose and Agon stock several times, and it really does make it look nice. Okay, so we're just initially applying. Okay, so we'll set that off to the side and then we've got the hand guard here. We'll go and wipe that off. It's definitely starting to like richen up the wood a little bit. Now this part right here, the hand guard, you do want to hit this with a uh, patch with some oil on it. This is all plastic or metal, but it does have a little bit of a buildup on it. So, but for now, go and wipe this on. Now you don't want to leave it this way because it's going to stay, you know, kind of not sticky, but just oily because it is basically like a, like a, like a, like an oil, a treatment oil. Go ahead and flip it over to the dry side, and I'll go ahead and just wipe it off. And it does make a tremendous difference with the finish. It almost makes it look brand new. So for like five bucks a can, that stuff is absolutely fantastic. Works great on vintage furniture. And you can do a second round of it if you want to, to kind of clean it up a little bit. I don't know if you guys can tell the difference on camera, but it always, and it also preserves the wood and it prevents it from getting dry and brittle and presents your, like your lacquer or your finish from flaking off. So it does do a really good job. You can wipe out the inside if you want to, it doesn't really matter. It's also a cleaner at the same time, which is nice. It'll take out some of the, uh, some of the, just the buildup on your, your finish of your wood. All right, so we're gonna go set that off to the side. Oh yeah, the screw, the screw's got a lot of rust on it. You can brush that off if you want to after you put a little couple drops of oil on it. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and wipe it down. This one's in pretty good shape. It's got a little tiny bit of a buildup on it, but not much. And then uh, we can actually begin the process of reassembly. So we'll get back to that here in just a moment. Okay, so reassembly is pretty simple. You've got a notch right here. You've got this little peg that goes across. You're just going to pull that in, put it down. And if that little ejector was sticking out, it's going to recock it, so don't worry about it. All right, and I'll just go ahead and flip it over and we will reattach the uh, hand guard. Okay, so just go ahead and take your hand guard and it's just gonna go, it's gonna lock back into this little notch right back here and just kind of push straight down. It locks into place. Put your screw back in. Now I'm not gonna be dry firing it to test it. We can still cock the mechanism and gently uh, lower the hammer manually. But with the shotgun this old, I don't wanna put any kind of stress on the firing pin. I don't know if it's a big deal or not, but Again, it's not my gun, so I want to be careful with it. Screw goes right back in. All right, now we're just going to go ahead and wipe everything off with a dry patch. Okay, so go ahead and cock the hammer back, and then with just a drop of oil on your Q-tip, just get in there and just kind of wipe that out a little bit. If you got to hit this with a couple, that's going to be fine. It's probably going to be kind of, it's going to probably be a bit of a buildup in here also, but you want to wipe that out. Again, you don't want excessive amounts of oil, but we just want something in there to get a chance to go through it. You can look down in there if you want to. Grab yourself a flashlight if you need to. Just get everything nice and clean. Okay, we're gonna do that with just a couple Q-tips to get that wiped out. Okay, with your finger on the hammer and your finger on the trigger, slowly drop the hammer. There we go. We're gonna wipe off this area with a patch with some oil on it, and that's pretty much gonna be about it. We're gonna go ahead and just do the brake action uh, to test it and make sure that it is uh, cocking properly, and we should be all set to go. So on this particular shotgun, when you do the brake action, it's going to eject the, you know, the spent round. You put your fresh round and close it. You do have to pull back on the hammer manually. It's not going to cock the hammer back when you brake it. And so that's one thing that makes this just a little bit different maybe from some of the other brake action shotguns out there. But essentially, that's what it takes to get it clean. Again, wipe it off so it's nice and shiny and you are good to go. All right, so not sure if you guys can tell the difference uh, before versus after versus where we were at the start of the video. Nice and shiny. Everything just looks awesome. Bore's nice and clean. The best part is that it's going to be that much easier to clean once you clean it the next time. So that's it, guys. This is Travis P11. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you like and subscribe. we got a ton of cleaning videos on this channel if you like what we did. If you have any other tips or suggestions, please chime in down below and let me know. Uh, this is the first brake action shotgun, maybe even first shotgun cleaning video we've ever done before, or maybe the second. So we're still kind of a noob on this one, but hopefully it came in handy for you. It makes the job even easier. 
Uh, don't shy away from a rugged shotgun like this. If you have a chance to pick one up, I highly recommend it, especially in the 10 gauge, which we'll be taking this one to the range and definitely putting a few shells down range with it. All right, so please like and subscribe. And guys, you can check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can follow me on gun channels, also on uh, YouTube and guntube.org. Uh, but in the meantime, I want you guys to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right, take care and have a good one. Bye-bye.